Hey guys, what's up? It's me, BP Bucket Ponds, and I'm here today with another video. This is Bladder Snail Feeding Time. I saw a similar video just the other day on YouTube in which somebody was feeding their snails, same species even, same snails, but they were feeding them some old rotten raw meat, like suspended in the tank in a nylon stocking or something. It was disgusting. I'm sure it smelled bad. Uh, that's not something you want in your home aquarium or in your bedroom or anything like that. So I wanted to show you how we do it here at Bucket Ponds. Uh, we use uh, fish flakes, cuttlefish bone, and uh, algae wafers. Yeah, that's our combination diet for our snails. And uh, they also eat any wild algae. And uh, any wilted plants in the tank tend to get eaten pretty quickly as well. Which uh, sounds bad, but it's actually a really useful trick that they do. They're little gardeners. They help keep your tank clean. They uh, scrape the glass for you. They really take care of things. Uh, don't underestimate a bladder snail in your aquarium. They can be a great ally and uh, the biggest member of your uh, cleaning crew. Uh, these guys are really easy to take care of. They're a very strong species. They can survive uh, really poor conditions. And I'm not saying that you should create poor conditions. But, you know, they tend to live in little mud bogs in stagnant water. I found some wild in a, uh, what I called a mud ditch. Because it was literally just a ditch with some mud in it. And they were in there just thriving. Uh, they're great, great pets. Uh, great members of your home aquarium. Uh, they make for good tank mates with tetras and guppies and mosquito fish and other species. Uh, some might, it's possible that your fish might peck at their uh, antenna or cause them some distress, but they're pretty tough, they're pretty strong critters, they, uh, they will bounce back from that. I've seen them go so far as to adapt their shell design to, uh, you know, work around whatever predators are in the tank. Uh, there's a few great scientific papers out there about the subject. And uh, in particular, if you can get a hold of uh, some crayfish or uh, crayfish water, that can trigger a breeding explosion in your bladder snails. That's a little known fact. Uh, I unfortunately don't have any crayfish, but I do acquire some pond water occasionally that has the uh, crayfish scents inside of it. So that helps out in uh, controlled methods. But uh, here in the farm tank, these guys have been bred in the tank, born in the tank descendants of a few that I found in an old aquarium. We found an old aquarium on the side of the road, picked it up, had some bladder snails in it, a couple fish, and that's what got me started in the hobby. Yeah. So these guys are all directly descended from them, and they're also, uh, I purchased a population from Texas online at one point, just to boost my numbers and genetic diversity a little bit. So uh, yeah, these guys are descendants of the snails that we found in some abandoned aquarium and the snails that we purchased from Texas. Uh, yeah, anyway guys, I'm BP and uh, I gotta get off of here right now. We have to stop. Uh, you can uh, catch me on Facebook, facebook.com slash bucket ponds and uh, that's for daily stories, for nice pictures and uh, quick tips in the hobby. If you're in the nature tanks, nature aquariums, nano tanks, outdoor ponds, any of that stuff, go ahead, like, subscribe, share, comment, and let me know, man. Or woman, either way. Uh, thanks, guys. Love y'all. Uh, keep it real. And uh, hit me up. I'm always around doing daily videos. Thanks.